The Diamonts were a race of silicon-based humanoids and natives of the planet Mondreus. The bounty hunter Spire is believed to be the only surviving member of this race and has made only one appearance in the Metroid franchise, and that is in Metroid Prime Hunters. However, how exactly the Diamonts went extinct is entirely unknown, even to Spire himself, as he uses his profession to try and answer this very question, even seeking the fabled ultimate power in the Olympic Cluster with the sole motive of solving this mystery. Before we delve any further into the possibilities regarding the fate of the Diamonds, let us first examine the creatures themselves. Based on Spire's appearance, scans, behavior, and creature name, the Diamonts had silicon-based bodies composed of, quote, molten ferrous compounds normally found only in a planet's core, unquote, implying the presence of carbon, silicon, and sulfur in their bodies as well. Other minerals include titanium, as evidenced by Spire's alt form, more on that later, and what are likely solid diamond crystals. These crystals are yellow-orange in color, at least in Spire's case, but based on both a concept art for Spire as well as his multiplayer color variants, it is possible that the Diamonts possess a diverse range of crystal colors, perhaps even different shades of rock skin as well. The Diamonts also had the ability to compress press their bodies into compact rounded yet spiked boulders, called the Dialanche. While engaged in this form, they could temporarily dislodge and orbit titanium segments of their bodies around themselves using such parts as deadly melee weapons, a maneuver known as the Fireblade. The Diamonts could also use this form to navigate along cliff faces, walls, and the like, as it enabled them to climb such vertical surfaces. This is very reminiscent of the rock monster Thardis of Metroid Prime, and his ability to morph into a ball, and him dropping the spider ball upgrade upon his defeat, thereby enabling Samus to traverse along magnetic rails while in morph ball mode. Lastly, the only known weapon of Diamond ancestry is the Magmal, a grenade launcher-like weapon that launches cohesive and explosive blobs of superheated magma, magma so hot in fact, that even the Diamonts, who can traverse through lava without fear, can too suffer from its burning effects. As an interesting albeit unsurprising side note, Diamond is very close to the French word for diamond, with only one vowel difference, but even more interestingly, the Diamond homeworld, Mondre has the root word mandre, which is French for world. Naturally, the suffix of the word dialanche also shares this linguistic origin. So how did a race such as the Diamonts face nearly total extinction? Well, although we don't know for sure what happened, there are a few things we can infer about their disappearance. For one, for Spire to not even know what happened to his people heavily implies that their demise was very sudden, similar to the Olympics' own doom at the hands of Gorea being abrupt. It is this very similarity that prompts Spire to investigate the Olympic Cluster in search of the fabled ultimate power since in his mind, solving their fate may help solve the fate of his own race as well. The sudden nature of their disappearance, therefore, rules out the possibility that they, like the Chosen, began to die out due to extreme age and loss of fertility, as such a means of decline would surely not go unnoticed. At the same time, however, another thing that can be inferred is that the very fact that Spire has no idea what happened to his race suggests that their demise barely even left a trace, meaning that the incident probably was not the result of a Leviathan meteor, as is seen in the fates of the Chozo of Talon IV, or even the surviving Luminoth of Aether. This seems to suggest further that their fate was not merely some natural disaster of any sort either, as surely Spire would have determined such a reality. This then raises the question, could it thus be determined that the Diamond Extinction was not a fateful accident, but rather an act of genocide? I believe the answer is yes, as Spire himself seems to suspect foul play behind his race's fate. According to the promotional pamphlet for Metroid Prime Hunters, Spire is described as, quote, stopping at nothing to avenge the attempted extinction of his people. 
unquote. The key word here is avenge, and this naturally implies, therefore, that Spire believes that it's not so much some thing responsible for their demise as someone. With that as a hypothetical basis, let us examine the known hostile factions and entities throughout the Metroid series. First and foremost, of course, which is also rather the boring answer, are the Space Pirates, as they are prone to ravage any world they can, especially worlds promising for new bases, hideouts, outposts, etc., that are not among the planets of the Galactic Federation, and Mondreus was most likely never a part of the Federation, as the Diamond disappearance seemed to go entirely unnoticed. Further, the Space Pirates hardly need a motive for claiming vulnerable worlds, but just for the sake of argument, let us consider a few reasons. For one, territory control and resources for operations to persist. However, this reason alone isn't likely, as their resulting and persisting presence would give away the secret of the Diamond extinction immediately, barring some reason for them to get the heck out of Dodge with little to no trace before Spire could investigate. In that in that case, another reason to invade Mondreus would be for the Diamonds themselves, which would certainly help explain their disappearance. If the Space Pirates aren't known for their bioweaponry, then I don't know what they're known for, and it also wouldn't be the only time they tried using rock monsters as soldiers. In that regard, it may be that the Pirates sought to somehow control the Diamonds and use them as powerful ground troops. The Diamonds in turn refused and resisted, leading to the Pirates making the ultimate decision to wipe them out instead. There is, however, another possible motive behind capturing the Diamonds, and that is the literal harvesting of them. As aforementioned, the Diamonds are made of raw and valuable minerals, minerals that the Space Pirates could probably put to other use. Furthermore, the Pirates have a trading partner, the Monks of Grondheim. What the Monks give the Pirates is unclear, but what the Pirates give the Monks in exchange are crystals of sorts, one example being the crystals grown in the Magmore Caverns of Talon IV. In other words, volcanic crystals. And the Diamonds themselves, of course, are made of such crystals. And so, in the eyes of the Space Pirates, the inhabitants of Mondreus were literally made of money. While we're considering the darker possibilities behind the Diamond extinction, let us now consider a few other answers behind their demise. Another hostile faction in Metroid is the Kraken Empire. While not much is known about the Krikens, what is known is that not only are they among the most feared and hated races in the galaxy, but also they too have an insatiable appetite for conquering worlds, perhaps an even greater appetite than that of the Space Pirates themselves. This is evidenced by the Kraken Rite of Passage for young males, who are exiled once they reach a certain age, only to return if they have either a. Found a candidate world for expanding the Empire, or b. Performed some other great act or feat for the glory of the Empire. The bounty hunter Trace is one such Kraken exile who seeks the ultimate power as his means of completing the Rite of Passage. In this respect, it may very well be that one of these exiles found Mondre and sent word back to the Kraken Empire, who then sent their legions to consume the world, and considering their reputation and their armies being composed of insectoid hive soldiers, the Krikens being able to annihilate the entire Diamond race is not unrealistic. However, like in the case of the Space Pirates and territory control, there is an issue with this hypothesis in that if the Krikens lingered and took control of Montreus, then surely Spire would have determined the culprit by now, as his homeworld would have become a part of the Kraken Empire itself. Perhaps in that regard, as if he were Dr. Min himself from Interstellar, the young male who gave the green light for the planet's targeting neglected to relay the fact that Mondreus may not have been suitable for Kraken expansion. This is of course purely conjecture, and it's not like other alien bug hordes haven't dwelt on volcanic worlds before, such as the Zerg on the planet Char from Starcraft, but at the same time, 
it would help explain the absence of the Krakens themselves in the aftermath of their Mondreus invasion. Another answer to the Diamond extinction is the appearance of some other hostile entity with immense power and exceptional resilience that also had the ability to travel from planet to planet. One such entity, of course, would be Gorea itself, the antagonist of the same game in which Spire and the Diamonds are introduced. Given that the Alembic themselves were wiped out, who didn't stand a chance against Gorea with even the most advanced technology in the universe, it's not unreasonable to assume that Gorea would have had little to no problem in destroying the Diamonts as well. The lack of any trace of the monster would certainly create the mystery of their disappearance, and Gorea was certainly capable of swift annihilation with no motive other than pure bloodlust. This may also help explain part of why Spire takes such interest in solving the riddle of the Alembic extinction, since perhaps he suspects that the very thing that destroyed the Alembic also destroyed his own people. As if to add to this hypothesis, when all of the bounty hunters destroy Gorea's prison and are left astonished by the result, the first of them to recover from the initial shock almost immediately and raise his weapon is, in fact, Spire the Diamond, almost as if there was something about the monster that looked familiar or even prompted the intuitive conclusion that this was in fact the thing that killed his people. If this is indeed the case, and if my theory on Gorea being originally a Mitoralis from the planet Bilium is correct, then it would seem that the creature has a strong tendency to target specifically worlds with hotter climates, as its own homeworld, Mondreus, and Olinos all share this property. Before we wrap up, there is one more possible explanation behind the Diamond Extinction I'd like to discuss. In the early 2000s, Retro Studios, the developers for the Metro Prime Trilogy, as well as being behind various assets for Prime Hunters, such as the designs of the Hunters themselves, had been working on a game called Ravenblade before cancelling its development to go all in on making the first Metroid Prime. What does this have to do with Spire and the extinction of the Diamonts, you may ask? Well, not only is Spire's design apparently based on a hostile entity from the game, but also the plot of the game involved the journey of a blade-wielding hero on a crusade to rid the world of evil. With which faction in the Metroid series does that description match? That's right, I am referring to the Vozon. Not only do the Vozon wield blade weapons, as demonstrated by the Vosythe, but they are also notoriously inquisitorial and zealous fanatics when it comes to morality and justice. For what reason, in that regard, would the Vozon seek to wipe out the Diamonds? Well, there are a number of possible explanations for this. For one, we don't really know what kind of people the Diamonts were, whether they were a peaceful or hostile race, but considering that Spire's Magmal is a weapon passed down through Diamond generations, as stated by the article for Spire's Trophy in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, we can conclude that they were not pacifists at the very least. It may have been that some crime on their part was committed, and it was seen as so heinous that the Vozon sought to bring swift retribution to them by annihilating them, as the Vozon in their zeal and devotion to ridding the universe of evil are likely to show no mercy. On the other hand, considering that the Space Pirates have probably committed far more and even greater atrocities than the Diamonts ever could, and with the exception of a severe bad blood situation between the Vozon and the Diamonts, the only logical explanation in that case would be that the Space Pirates as a whole posed far too tall of an order to deal with, at least for the moment, something the Vozon would certainly know, especially if my theory on them being a separatist faction of Space Pirate origin is correct, and so they chose a much more feasible target for exacting justice instead. Nonetheless, there are a couple of other motives for the Vozon to wipe out the Diamonts. For one, the Vozon easily see various other races and organizations as unworthy or criminal in comparison to themselves. Which groups in particular is unclear, but what may be the case is that the Vozon deemed the Diamonts, as silicon-based lifeforms, not only unworthy,
worthy, but also abominations worthy of only destruction, and so wiping them out, in their eyes, would have been nothing short of a holy crusade. And similar to my red versus blue theory, articulating the very anti kriken nature of Silex's equipment, the Judicator, a weapon of supercooled plasma, would be an ideal weapon against the volcanic diamond. This is supported by the fact that heat-based enemies throughout the Olympic Cluster are especially vulnerable to the Judicator. Secondly, although this is more of a stretch, it may be that the Vozon's devotion to exacting cold-hearted justice upon evildoers also manifests itself further in a sort of cult surrounding the nature of being cold in of itself. For instance, their homeworld, Vo, is a glacier planet whose winters never cease, and as if things couldn't get any more frigid, the Judicator, the supercooled plasma beam, is their sacred weapon, which is granted to those who complete the Vozon Codex's five steps of training, and so their idea of punishing criminals across the universe is to literally bring and shackle their quarry with the bitter cold of Vo itself. Thus, the Diamonts and their homeworld Mondreus would surely be once again seen as transgressing abominations in the sight of the Vozon, as they are anything but freezing, and so the Vozon destroyed them. In any of these aforementioned cases, given the Vozon's affinity to the cold, it makes perfect sense why they would have left after completing their crusade, as Mondreus' climate would certainly not agree with them. There are other possible explanations for the Diamond disappearance. Maybe it was civil war, or even cannibalism, as has been theorized regarding the mysterious fate of the Easter Island natives. Maybe it was even transdimensional abduction, for lack of a better term. Or even a Mach and Chozo invasion, or the Ringleaders, or the Egonoid Star Marines, for that matter. Personally, I think that any of the explanations I covered at length are plausible ones, but perhaps we will never know what truly happened to the Diamonds, and their demise will continue to be as vague and abrupt as the answer given to this very question by the man behind the story of Metroid Prime Hunters, Richard Verodi himself. It's a hard galaxy. Not everyone makes it. First and foremost, of course. Excuse you? It's not unreasonable to assume that Gorea would have had... <sighs> Before we wrap up, there is one more possible explanation behind the Diamond Extinction I'd like to discuss. In the early 2000s, Retro Studios, the developers for the pri- <clears throat> Maybe it was civil war, or even cannibalism, as has been theorized regarding the mysterious fate of the Easter Island narratives. <laughs> narratives? <laughs> what the frick was that?